However, um, the, the children in Kabira, um, they certainly um, had um, some issues relating to their um, infectious diseases that um, we were able to see, particularly fungal infections of the scalp and of the skin and, um, and diarrhea. So that was uh, very successful. Now, I wanted to just interview Dr. Judy Bugwa, um, just to ask her a few questions. She is the founder of Home Care, and she um, has been doing this wonderful work um, that I'm, I'm sure that she's, um, she, she got this um, put planted into her, her mission planted into her from God. And I'm just going to have her talk a little bit about how she started Home Care and um, what is the current um, um, affairs um, in um, Home Care. Thank you so much. Um, I started home care because I had a personal need. Uh, I was going to church, and it was a big church. And when I got saved, my husband and I both were not born again. But two years later, I got born again, and I started going to one of the churches here in Nairobi. And it was a big church with over 2,000 people. And the pastors would be calling people, and they say they want uh, people to have fellowships, couples fellowship, or widows fellowship, or single fellowship. Okay. And I couldn't go, <coughs> excuse me, I could not go to any. I did not fit in any, because my husband was not born again. Right. He wouldn't come uh, in the couples fellowship. Right. And so I felt very, very lonely in the church, oh. even though there were 2,000 people. And as I was feeling sorry for myself, God said it's not time for pity party. It was time for me to do something. And he said, look around and see other women who are like you. Mm. And so when I hear how we're talking about the women in Mukureni, I know that they are on the right track when they start praying for their husbands. So I looked around, and sure enough, there were about 20 women that I could get that were whose husbands were not born again. Mm. And I called them, and I said, why don't we get together and have our own fellowship? Because we can't fit in, in any of the uh, local fellowships. And so we started to pray, and we agreed that they come to my home so that we pray on a Saturday. Okay. And we started with 20. And it was so beautiful, we found ourselves, and we started to pray for our husbands. And then the next meeting, we said, let's go to another home. And believe it, we were about 40. The next wow. meeting, about 60. The next meeting, about 100. Within three years, we had over 500 women wow. praying yeah. for Praise their the families. Mm -hmm. wow. And within like four or five years, we had over 1,000 women praying for their family. So at this point, we had moved from families, I mean from homes, because no home could take so many people. So we had moved to, to church halls or other public halls. And when we were meeting in those halls, is when one day I was coming from a prayer meeting and the Lord spoke to me. I had somebody speaking in my car and I had something saying, enlarge the border. And I looked around because I thought I was alone in the car. <laughs> and sure enough, the voice said again, enlarge the border. And when I got home, I opened the Bible and I looked at that verse and it's Isaiah 54 and verse 2 that talks about enlarging the borders of your habitation. And I said, Lord, what do you mean by enlarging the border? And it was so clear that God wanted me to register this ministry so that I can move from just Nairobi and go to the whole of Kenya because there is a need. And not just Kenya, but uh, even beyond Kenya. And that's exactly what I did. I, I registered the ministry. And now we are and registered. You registered it as home care? Uh -huh, okay. We registered it as home care. We even prayed for the name. And the name came home care because we are praying for homes. So we are praying for home, home and home caring care. for homes. Mm -hmm. And it is home care, spiritual fellowship. And not just caring, give them, giving them food, but mm -hmm. we are also caring about their spirits. Mm -hmm. So it's home care, spiritual fellowship. Okay. So what about the kids? And how did that part of it develop to bring the children here through the to the center. Right. So when we when we now got registered, right. uh, we felt that the first thing we needed to do is to get a place of our own. Because looking for halls, you sometimes go to the church and the church hall has something they are doing. Right. Or this place they are doing something. Or people get lost because they don't know where you are where going you to meet the next time. Right. So we prayed. First of all, we really prayed for a place. And again, the second time, I really 
heard the voice of God. I heard that God was going to give us a place on Gong Road. And I was praying and I heard we're going to get a place on Gong Road. And I said, that must be my mind or I must have eaten a lot of food last night. <laughs> because Gong Road is very expensive. Down where we are, three blocks from where we are, is President Moy's home, where he lives even today. Wow. Three blocks. And at that point when we came here, 10 years ago, uh, the president was still the president of Kenya. So how do you go as a small fellowship and buy a property next to the president? Wow. But you know, we, we, wow. we, we took Psalms 24 verse 1 very seriously. Psalms 24 verse 1 says, The earth belongs to the Lord, Amen. and the fullness thereof, wow. and they that wow. dwell therein. Yeah. And so we stood with that verse and we said, God, you spoke. And so it does not matter that we are going to be next to the president, and it doesn't matter how small we are, you are going to do it. And God, it's a long story, God, by his own grace, every September, we decided to be raising money locally and we would also write to our friends and we would raise money and we put it together until we had enough money to buy this property. We own this property. Then when we came here, women started coming because they would see uh, our name outside there, Home Care Spiritual Fellowship. Let me tell you about two, I could tell you about so many, but let me tell you even one. Okay. There was one lady called Rhoda from Kibera. She is HIV positive. Right. Because of the stigma, she wanted to kill herself. So she decided, because Gong Road vehicles go very fast, she's going to go to Gong Road and throw in That's front self. of a moving car. Oh. She went there at 9. By 12.30, no car had knocked her. She came back wanting to go back home. And when she saw Home Care Spiritual Fellowship, she said, let me check what is this spiritual, because she was really crying. She came, and it was a Thursday when we meet. We mm. meet. And she came and she got saved. Now she's one of our advocates. She's one of our preachers in Kibera. She is so full of God and she preaches in Kibera. We have been teaching them. But your question was, how did the children come in? Right. When we came here, women like Lorda and others started coming for our fellowship on Thursday. Right. But then after prayer, they would tell us, but you know, ladies, you have told us to accept the Lord Jesus Christ. You know we don't live a clean life. We need these men so that they pay houses for us. Right. So we said, okay, suppose we trust God with you, that Jesus is going to be your husband, and he is going to help us pay houses for you. Will you stop prostitution? And they said yes. And at this point they had accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. So we took it upon ourselves to be paying their house rent. Up to today we pay their house rent. Ask me how, I don't know. But I know God who gave manna to the children of Israel. He is still the God of our ministry. He is our God. So we believed God to give us money to pay. Then when they came, four of them died because they were HIV positive, and they, and they were no so treatment. frail. They, they, they got treatment, they went to the government hospitals, they got uh, the medication, but they were hungry. And you know if you take that medicine when you have no food, the nutrition. Yeah, then they would die. So four of them died. And so I said, Lord, I don't want anyone, any other person to die. And so we started feeding them. So they would come, and before the meeting, we give them food. Mm -hmm. But when we gave them food, they would hide some of the food. Yeah, and I said, you Kibera women, what can one do to you? We are paying for your house, we are giving you food, why are you hiding it? And they said, which woman would eat when the children are home and they are hungry? Mm -hmm. That's why we are hiding the food. Mm -hmm. So they said they have the children. And then we said, okay, we, will, we want to meet your children, and we'll be feeding your children on Saturdays. That's how we started OVC, Orphaned and Vulnerable Children Program. And that's how we have now 400 kids in Kibera right. that we feed every Saturday. We don't just give them food. We go and Peter does a good job with his team. Yeah. They give them Bible club. Right. They, they get there in the morning. These children have had nothing. Some of them wait for our food on Saturday. Some of them live on water. Some of them live on a piece of toast or bread or ugari. You have seen Ugadi now. Yes. Wow. But they look forward to coming to home care on Saturday. So they get porridge when they get there, mm -hmm. which is nutritional. Sure. And then uh, they, they, they do their, their program. Then lunch hour, 10 o'clock, they get tea. Mm -hmm. And then before they leave, they get a hot meal. 
and that's a good nutritional hot meal and that's probably the only meal they get for the day for the whole week for the whole week for the whole